Hi everyone, it's Melissa. And Desiree. Welcome to another episode of Teen Gen Talks, where the goal is to empower the youth of Glendale and connect youth to community resources, individuals, and organizations through interviews and discussions. Today's special guests are Rosa and Catherine from Latinx Lens. Rosa is a Chicana Ryan Tomatoes approved film critic and co-founder and co-host of Latinx Lens, a podcast and website dedicated to highlighting Latinx representation and contribution in film and television. They also review newly released films through their Latina lens. She is a proud member of various critic associations, including Hollywood Critics Association, Latino Entertainment Journalists Association, and Online Association of Female Film Critics. Catherine is a graduate of the University of Texas at Austin with a bachelor's degree in radio, television, film. She works in the Austin film industry by day and is a Cherry Picks approved film and television critic by night. In 2020, she co-founded the Latin X Lens podcast to highlight the contributions of Latinos in film and television. But before we get started, don't forget to follow us on our socials on Facebook and Instagram at MyGlendalLAC. Don't forget to follow us on Spotify or Apple or anywhere where you listen to podcasts. Also, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Glendale Library Arts and Culture, where we post the full episodes every Friday at 4.30 p.m. Thank you, Rosa and Catherine, for taking the time every day to talk with us. We have a lot to discuss. So to start off, the two of you co-founded Latinx Lens. We will get to talking about Latinx Lens a bit more soon, but I want to know how did the both of you find the love for film? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to punt that to Rosa first. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um <laughs> Well, for me, it actually was more of a, it, it just randomly happened with me. I, I, I just randomly started watching this weekly uh, YouTube channel uh, where they would talk about movies once uh, uh, Monday through Friday. I think it was like 30 or 45 minutes. And then I just, out of nowhere, decided that I did not want to feel lost in the conversation. So in order for me to keep up with them, I had to go to the movie theater on a weekly basis, keep up (laughs) with the newly released films. And before I knew it, I was going to the movie theater every weekend. And before I knew it, it was literally like four or five months in, and I was just obsessed with it. And I was um, becoming more familiarized with everything. And I said, if I was going to take in film criticism and reviewing movies on a more serious level that I had to get a a little bit more of a better understanding in movies and film history and how it all came to be. So that's when I start going to school. And that's when it all leads to Latin excellence and all that good stuff. But yeah, it was just random. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, yeah, I, I've i always loved movies since I was little. And I think it's because my parents were a little on the stricter side. So I couldn't go out as much. Um, and, and also, I lived in a very small town. Um, so my escape about and learning about new things was watching movies and TV. So I think I would always just dream of like, you know, I, w- I want to go to the places that, uh, you know, I was watching. And so and then in high school, um, I started going to the movie theater regularly with my mom. Like we would go every weekend. It was like our thing to do because I'm the last of four kids. And so I was the last one at the house. Um, and so it was just our thing to go go do that. And so it became a ritual. Um, I got really obsessed with movies and like wanting to find out, you know, how they were made. Um, you know, I'd watch all behind the scenes features. Um, I was just so fascinated by it. Um, and, and and I don't know, it was just it was just something that I always gravitated towards. I was like the movie geek um, in my school. Like everyone knew I was obsessed with Lord of the Rings and all that and all that. And I would I would go to the video store and like rent all the, you know, Oscar nominated films. And um, I ended up going to um, college and I switched majors, but I ended up switching to radio TV film. So I graduated with a degree in that and uh, from the University of Texas at Austin. Um, And then I sort of, you know, had to get a job and, you know, do all the other stuff. But I eventually made my way back to film. um, And so I work in the local film industry now. And then I, you know, was able to join Russa with Latinx Lens and talk about um, you know, film and TV in, in, in this way. So yeah, it's kind of, it's a very short version of my journey, but, but yeah, it's, it's sort of, that's sort of like the, you know, the, the, the very uh, quick path to, to my love of film. <laughs> so 
Going back to Latinx lens, what was the driving force in starting the podcast? Yeah, so while I'm, I'm still actually working on my film degree, uh, I was taking a class uh, called Gender and Race in American Film. So uh, I think it was like six weeks or so. And then for week four, we were going to be learning about Latinos, Hispanics, and film history alongside Asian Americans and Native Americans, which was the first red flag when you have three different groups of, of representation in one week. So we're utilizing this 500 page textbook um, for, for the class. And I'm very, very disappointed to just read a page and a half on just Latinos and, and what we've done and how we've contributed to film in the past 100 years. And this is both in TV and film. Um, so yeah, I was upset, uh, just disappointed, particularly because uh, Prior to that, I had just written an article on, on Dolores del Rio, who's a famous Mexican actress uh, who worked in the silent era for Women's History Month. And I, I was just disappointed. So I just sat down <laughs> and just contemplated on the page and a half I had just read. Um, and before I knew it, I just randomly t- uh, posted a tweet, uh, just asking if anybody would be interested in listening to a podcast that would be focused on Latinos and highlighting what we've contributed in our achievements in, in film. And to my luck, <laughs> Catherine <laughs> replied to that tweet. Um, believe it or not, this is the only way Catherine and I have ever interacted. Uh, she's in Texas, I'm in Los Angeles. We've never met in person. Um, and Twitter, it can be a lot of things, but on um, the good days, <laughs> it, it, it made this happen. Yeah. And she replied and the rest is cinematic history. <laughs> um, and I, I guess then my question is, how did both you, Rosa, and you, Catherine, know that your dynamic would work You know, so well together? Um, enough to co-host because I know you you like you mentioned you guys never met in person so how did you guys figure out that dynamic yeah I I had been following Rosa on Twitter for a little bit I think maybe a year or less than a year mm-hmm. um, and yeah. I knew she was always she was always so positive on there and you know like she mentioned social media can be a little bit dicey sometimes it can be yeah. it can bring a lot of good but it can you know also be a little bit you know if you're not careful it can be very toxic um, but she was always the positive force especially with movies and she was always so excited and I love that because as a fellow movie person you just want to you gravitate towards people who are um, just the love of movies not you know there's other things going on but she I could tell she was that kind of person and then when she posted that um, that tweet it was something that I had been wanting to talk about like you know exploring uh, you know my identity Um, I hadn't really I, I, I had talked about movies and TV but never from I guess, I mean, I'm inherently Mexican American, so I'm always talking about it from my perspective, but I never had really focused on diving into that part. Um, and I, I was sort of on a, my own journey. And when she posted that, it kind of like spoke to me and I was like, I really want to dive into this. Um, and then when we were, when I messaged her, it just, we never, it was always just so easy. And I think that's when, you know, um, you can kind of tell like that when it's easy, it's going to be a good thing. Cause Uh, And then we, you know, we talked, we zoomed a lot doing, um, you know, planning for the podcast. Um, And, and and then when we did our first episode, it, it, you know, it was, it was a little bit like, you know, we had to get to know each other, but then like, it kind of was only like, maybe in the fourth episode, we sort of like found our way. And then it it was just sort of, we, we've, we've already, um, I don't know, I think we've, we've clicked more and more and then we kind of know our little isms and things. And um, so it's been, I think over a year now, um, and, and yeah, so it's just been really fun to kind of get to know Rosa through this medium of our love of film and TV. And then also like on a more personal level when we like have our outside conversations, but I guess we didn't know it was going to work. It just, it just, you know, it, it happened that it, it, it did. <laughs> <laughs> so what is one thing you both wish you have known prior to starting Latinx Lens? I mean, I guess, yeah, that is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, I actually never uh, thought about it. Yeah, I think... I think one of the things I, I wish I would have known is, or maybe not wish, but like that I it surprised me is that um, how fulfilling it's been. Um, mm-hmm. Because I mean, I love movies and TV. I, you know, it's a big part of my life, but doing it in this way through this podcast um, has just been so meaningful. I've, I've, I've learned so many things um, and also doing it consistently. Like I had been reviewing TV and film prior to this, but I think in this medium of podcasting, it's been something where um, 
uh, I don't know, I, I feel like I have found my voice and I feel like it's me and Rosa have, you know, I think she has her own journey with this. But um, I think that's something that I didn't know prior to um, starting that I was actually going to have this whole like transformation, um, <laughs> you know, within myself of like talking about movies and TV, feeling confident um, as a Latina too, you know, finding that that identity and um, connection with my culture and learning about other, um, you know, Latino cultures and everything like that. And so that's, I guess, something that I didn't expect. I just, I don't know, maybe I was a little naive in what we were doing, like, oh, we're going to talk about movies and TV through our perspective, but it's been so much more than that, which is nice. I guess I'm going to pick it back off what Kat said, <laughs> <laughs> um, because no, 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 she's absolutely right. What we initially thought was just going to be me and her talking about movies and just literally having her family and my family listening to the podcast eventually evolved to something more of a, a more deeper analytical, um, not only analysis of, of the movies, but of ourselves and our own preconceived notions of uh, demographics or genres or, in, or even countries, um, just based solely on what we've been programmed to think of. And I, I I think that was something I was not, I was not prepared to, to learn. I was not prepared to learn about my own, um, my own unconscious biases. And, 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 and it was just, it's ridiculous that, that it took a podcast like this. I mean, I guess to, to some extent, I'm very thankful for that page and a half because it, it's, it certainly has, uh, if anything else, not only have I uh, found a friend in Kat, but it's also taught me a lot about myself. Um, and, and that is something that I will always be, be, be grateful to the podcast and something that I certainly was not expecting to, to have um, with this podcast, yeah. And how do you both balance life, work, and the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I laugh because I just walk in like 15 minutes ago <laughs> being in traffic for two hours. <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that because I, I just do it. Um, <laughs> just like Nike, I just do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, it, it's not easy. But when, when it's something that you're truly, you're truly passionate about and, and you really care about, you find a way. Um, you always make it work. Um, and I think motherhood has certainly helped me shape um, that. It, it's helped me, it's built me to um, work <laughs> and function accordingly <laughs> with two, three hours of sleep. So to me, I, I can find, we record episodes at eight in the morning, six in the morning, or late, 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 late night. Um, so we, we, we always find a way. I mean, for me, it, it's not easy. Um, but again, because it's something I'm very much passionate about, I always find a way. Yeah, I think I would say I've barely learned how to balance things in the last year. Um, <laughs> and I think, I mean, one of the good things, I guess, that has come out of the pandemic or a positive is having, you know, being able to slow down and really um think about what actually matters where you want to spend your time after you know like well you know we're still in it but as we've like kind of emerged back into you know i go to work and, and all that but like i have found it a little bit harder going back now um and then now you know i got a puppy and and you know with and having to spend time with my husband and relationships and stuff and then you know also i watch a lot of movies and tv that's a lot of screen time um where you know you can't be distracted um so you're like that's away from you know my husband doesn't watch everything with me i kind of like watch a lot like either <laughs> at night when i'm you know trying to prep for our podcast like i'll watch when we're when he, you know he's asleep or um you know um whenever i can like a lunch break or something so but what i've learned is um i used to be a lot more um maybe put like my viewing stuff as priority and i've realized mm -hmm. as you got older because of the pen what really matters and so i have made it um, I think it just takes more planning now, um, but it's possible. So you got to make sure like, um, you know, what's the most important, make sure you're spending time with that first, your work, obviously. Um, and then, um, and then I squeeze in all the other stuff. And on, honestly, it's been really good lately because I've sort of planned everything out. And also you have more time than you think. Cause um, I mean, prior to this, I was telling you guys offline, um, it was seven. I was I wasn't gonna take my dog to the to the park, um, but I was like, I can go. It's forty minutes. I can come back. I still have enough time to get back on time. And before, I would have been like, oh, it's seven already. I can't do anything. Um, so it's just maximizing every little bit of time and and also just calming down and um, knowing that it can be done. Um, just you know. 
planning and 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 prioritizing what's most important um and then you can get everything done so but it's taken a long time so <laughs> to to get to that point and i'm still trying to figure it all out but um i think having the podcast too with russa and having someone i know is depending on me to make sure i watch those things or so we can prep and we can record has also really helped um in balancing everything because i know i need to you know, uh, I don't want to let her down either. So it, it kind of helps um, having a partner in that regard too. So Rosa, you're a proud member of various critic associations. How did you find the right associations for you to join? You know what, to, to be honest with you, I, it, it was, it was hard. It, it was a, a struggle. I knew if I wanted to do this and I wanted to gain some credibility um, to, to becoming a film critic. I had a at least join um, a, a few critic groups. And I think I, I applied to the ones that I thought uh, I would gain more um, resources from that I thought I would be able to um, network with and, and meet more people. Networking, oh God, that, that goes a long way, especially in, in, in criticism. Um, so yeah, I, the first, uh, I was very lucky to apply to the Online Association of Female Film Critics. Uh, that was the first association to accept me. I was genuinely shocked. I was not expecting uh, that email. And from there on, I think it was just a, a matter of, because groups have, um they they have of course they have certain criteria but it, it has a lot to do with where you live geographically so I'm, I'm a member of like the hollywood critics association which is based here in hollywood not that far away from here um female critic circles and 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 things like that so it, it's just a matter of what you think it's gonna um benefit you the most but also what you bring to the group as well because at the end of the day it, it's a double-edged sword yes you you are part of this but however you um behave quote unquote on social media and such you're also kind of representing the group um, so it, it, it's a matter of uh, of what what's going to benefit me but also what i bring to the group so it's a bit of give and get. <laughs> <laughs> and Catherine, you already touched upon this a bit, but you are a graduate from the University of Texas at Austin with a BA in radio, TV, and film, and you work in the Austin film industry by day. So what has that experience been like and what has it taught you? Yeah, so I, um, when I graduated from, from UT, it was, um, sort of hard to navigate, you know, where to go next. Um, especially I was back in 2012. Um, so I, I didn't really know what was the next step. I actually went to, um, I did a working holiday in Australia because I was for after, like a year after just to kind of see what I was going to do. Um, and that actually, that experience really taught me a lot. Um, and then I kind of, I came back and, um, I wasn't in, in the film and I was trying to get back in. I was doing, um, you know, I started doing reviewing and writing on the side. Um, and then I, uh, was able to use my admin experience to sort of get into where I'm the position I'm in now um, working for a local film director um, and I have to say as like a film nerd as someone who um, you know I you know just watching all those extra features when I was like a teenager I it's honestly been a dream come true to be able to kind of go on a lot and see like the hustle and bustle of people with like cameras and gear and stuff and um, I, I, I feel so lucky but also I know that like it's it's also a lot of hard work because you know, I, after college, you know, and doing what you needed to do to get to um, where I'm at, where I am today. But um, I have to say, it's just, um, yeah, I, I'm so lucky right now because I love my job. And <laughs> um, I love being, I love being um, sort of behind the, you know, the scenes of seeing how the, you know, the films and, and, and like the, the industry works. Um, but then I also love what we do at Latinx Lens where, you know, I get to also enjoy the end product and really appreciate mm -hmm. Um, how much work it actually is um, to get even the movie made and the films and, and the TV. That's why I think um, when we talk about film and TV, I never sort of uh, bash anybody because, you know, you're watching somebody's work. And I know, um, you know, it just so happened. Maybe it just doesn't work for, you you know, and for whatever reason. Um, but, yeah, it's it's that perspective has been really um, great for me, just having, you know, the job by day and then doing what we do by night. So. And since starting Latinx Lens, you guys have, you know, been around films a lot and, you know, you're both approved film critics and all that stuff. So I want to know if both of you 
or both of your takes on the media in Hollywood and if you are starting to see change in the representation or there's not just yeah I just want to I'm curious on your thoughts a, a little um from my perspective of course uh, I I'm, I'm not entirely sure I, I do see a little bit more um, because initially th this is how um, ignorant and I'm, I'm still ignorant, but how ignorant I was back then. I generally thought there was going to be a point where the podcast was not going to last more than a few months because I didn't think we're, we're, we had enough content. I didn't think we had enough directors to cover, enough actors to cover, enough movies to cover, only to find out that we are saturated with it and that we just never learned about it. We were just never exposed to it. Um, so in, in terms of representation, I think it's always been there, um, but you just do not have the right, you don't have the people interested in it. You don't have a Latinx lens to talk about those films. You do not have a Latinx lens to dedicate a whole episode on Anthony Quinn, on Raul Julia, on Rita Moreno, on people who have left their footprint on cinema in, in, in history, but they just don't talk about it. They, they, you just do not have, I think the representation, it is lacking in cinema and in films, but I think it's lacking even more when it comes to criticism and journalism. Yeah, that was the most surprising thing for me too. Is thinking like, oh, there's not going to be anybody for us to cover in the in in the beginning of cinema because even as a as a film major, I never remember learning about Anthony Quinn, Raul Julia, um, Rita Moreno, like none of that. Um, so I was actually I was actually mad when I we we started doing these things because I was where was yeah. where were these courses when I was taking. Um, cinema, and I think there were a few, but maybe um, like l there's Latino studies in, in in UT, so I don't want to. And I know now there's a lot more, um, but I I guess I just wasn't exposed to it. But also that sort of thing, like I should have known about that. It should have been more mm -hmm. prominent. Um, but and then just in like normal pop culture, me um, you know what we see a lot. I never was exposed to that either. And I'm from you know in 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 Texas. The Rio Grande Valley, it's primarily, you know, 90% um, Hispanic, you know, Latinos. So if, if I didn't even learn about it there, like, like, you know, it just, it just, it, it's, it's, it blew my mind when we were doing this podcast, how much I didn't know um, about the already the the representation that was already there throughout film and television history so that's been really nice to kind of uncover that and show people like hey we've always been here it's not something that's new. Um, but also, I think in the current. Um, current television and like film stuff there has been some some like better representation now where it's not just you know the the gang members and um the you know people like the trauma porn sort of thing where it's just the undocumented stories which they need to be told um and that that does exist but we need like a million other stories where it's just like you know regular people like us you know or or just like the the other side of that that we we need to see everything um, and so I have been seeing a little bit more of that, um, but yeah, and, and then Russ is right. Like, I think, um, the fact that we didn't know about all this, the fact that there was only a page and a half in the book, mm -hmm. the fact that I never took any specific thing in my film, um, you know, my film, um, you know, degree, like I never had any of that, um, you know, those like Anthony Quinn won two Oscars and I didn't even know about it. Um, and so I, I think that it needs to come from also like the media studies perspective. Um, and hopefully we're, we're, we're helping in that regard of people being able to learn about, um, you know, representation that's already been there and, and the one that is also happening as well. Cause there are shows in TV that are doing it. Um, and we were try to, we review those and, and, uh, highlight, you know, when there is, um, you know, represent Latino representation, but, um, yeah, I think it still needs a, a little bit to go. So for anyone wanting to start a podcast, what would be a tip that you would give them? Send a tweet out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And if you're lucky, uh, somebody like Catherine will reply to you. I don't know. I, I To be quite honest, I, I'm very, very, um, I'm not tech savvy. I, I, I don't do the, the editing or the producing. That's all Catherine. Um, so it's just, I don't know. I, I'm lucky in a sense. I'm very, very, very lucky that somebody like Catherine came came to to um, to the team and and she was willing to do it. So in terms of a technical aspect, I 
cannot um, answer that question, but on a, uh, on, on, on a different level in terms of researching and, and everything, it, it takes time. Uh, make sure you, you have time to uh, do your research. It, it takes a lot of planning. It, it does take a while. It, it may initially come across as something as a, an easy alternative, either for uh, film reviewing or, or whatever uh, other theme or topic you want to discuss, but it does take a lot of preparation to do. Because um, even then, even right now, um, as I'm still doing the podcast, I, I do need to prepare myself. Otherwise, I'm just going to be sitting there with poor Catherine just across mm. from me, just <laughs> sitting there. And I'm like, um, yeah, uh-huh. And <laughs> yeah, no. If you're not prepared, then you're really not going to come you're just not going to do anything well. You're not going to transmit any uh, concepts or ideas or, or anything like that. So just consider the, I, the fact that having a podcast does take a lot of time, a lot of researching. And this is just coming from a, a perspective that I don't even do anything in terms of the technical aspect, which is what Catherine's in charge of. Um, I would say because I had tried doing a podcast before this one where I kind of learned the the pitfalls and the the hardships of where you 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 really need to be realistic with what you want to do so i would just say um you know even though it sounds like oh we'll release four episodes a month um you know if you can only do one if you can only do one a month like really well i would do that um and it's okay you know just tell your audience hey we really we're a monthly podcast um, but that one podcast is going to be amazing, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then later down the road, if you if you feel once you've got it down, because you get the editing, you get everything else going, then you can add in and, and sort of see where you want to take the next step like it, we have been doing. Um, but I'd, I'd say be realistic with the time that you have, um, because I know for me, like I always want to do so much. And then it's like, wait, what can I actually do? Because I can't stay up 24 hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> And in terms of like the podcast uh, editing and, and I was self-taught, like I just, you know, I use Adobe Audition and um, I had a little bit of familiarity with like the iMovie and then sort of, I mean, Adobe Audition is a little bit more complicated, but um, there's like other ones that are a little bit more basic um, and YouTube's your friend and also just trial and error. Um, and also there was a, a tip when I first started my other podcast was um, use what you have first. Don't try to go and, you know, buy everything that you think you need. Don't, you don't need every, anything fancy. Um, you could just even use your, your, um, your phone. Um, and then once you get a handle on it, if your content is good, the technical aspects will, will happen as you go. But if you don't focus on your content, then it doesn't matter how much like fancy equipment you have, it's never going to get better. So I would just say, be realistic and focus on your content and then just the other stuff will be able to be fixed. Sort of like a movie that gets a bigger budget later on, like the filmmaker, they're able to, but the filmmaker needs to be, have that like kind of, you know, like that uh, foundation um, or else it doesn't matter when you have, you know, there's been those blockbusters that don't do well because it doesn't have like the, you know, the foundation. Mm -hmm. So sort of build that foundation for yourself first is sort of my, um, my tip of realist being realistic and just using what you have at first. And I want to know what does Latinx lens mean for the both of you? And also what does being Latina mean for the both of you? Well, the title came as a, a, I was literally driving. I was on in my two hour traffic daily. <laughs> um, and it, it just came to me in, in a sense that because what, prior to Latinx Lens, I was working in a, on a website called In Their Own League. And what they, uh, what they focus on is highlighting female representation in, 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 film, in the film industry. So I'm already coming from, from a very uh, feminist uh, background. So we were always talking about that female lens, that female lens, and, and how important it is to have uh, female stories told through the female lens and, and, and the different the difference between the male lens and the female lens, and the female gaze and all that good stuff. So yeah, it was just like, well, you know what, 
we, we can probably just talk about uh, our Latinx lens, but also use the lens of the camera to see how Latinos have been being represented this whole time. So you can interpret it in however uh, way you, you wish, uh, but to me, it has a double meanings. It has my perspective on the movies that I'm watching, but also the directors and the filmmakers uh, perspective of how they're depicting us um, and then how we interpret it. And um, you said, uh, what it, does it mean to be a Latina? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Cause I know like whatever I answer is not gonna be uh, the perfect answer. And I think that's what being a Latina is, um, <laughs> being imperfect. Uh, being, uh, to me, being a Latina is of course, if you wanna go by the literal term, it's being somebody who descends from a Latin American country um, or, to me as a Chicana, first generation Chicana, both my parents are from Mexico. Uh, to me, uh, being a Latina is, is coming from, again, my culture, Mexican culture, and, and, and Latino, the culture, the food, the music, um, the, the, the beliefs and the traditions, everything, it, it, it's to me what, what a Latina means. And it, it's gonna be different for everybody. And I think another purpose of the, of the podcast is to, um, to, to, to tell our audiences that Latino is not a monolith. Not, not, being a Latino does not mean we're all the same, uh, mm -hmm. that we all descend from Mexico or that we're all Mexican-Americans. There's various countries in Latin America that a lot of people don't necessarily are familiarized with. And I think being a Latino is exactly that, uh, being different, um, being being unique, and and being okay with that, uh, being being um, being good with that, being okay with the fact that not all of us speak Spanish. That's uh, some of us speak Spanglish perfectly well, um, or that some of us speak Portuguese, or others that don't speak Spanish at all, and that's perfectly fine. It does not make anybody any more more or less Latino. Um, I can go for hours talking about this, so <laughs> so I'll, I'll 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 stop and just hand it over to Catherine. Um, I don't know how to follow that up. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I think Latinx lens. Um, Rosa, you know, described how it came about, and which I love. The, I love the term because I love that um, the the double edge with our with our name of you know um, it can be um, when we talk about films and also from our perspective. Um, and so she said it perfectly, but also what the podcast means to me is just um, being able to learn more about my culture, learn about different perspectives, also non-Latino perspectives when we talk, when we um, see other films, because we do review um, non-Latinx films, we're reviewing everything because also those films need to have our perspective as well. Mm. Um, and I think that's just good in general because um, you know, it shouldn't just be, I don't want to only see Latino movies, um, you know, and I don't think, you know, or else we're never going to learn anything. Um, I think that's also one of the, the, the thing, why we have some issues is we don't want to, you know, we don't go outside our box. Um, so I, I think for me, it's just been so fun, um, to, to do that with this podcast. So it means so much to me, um, to have this outlet to sort of explore that and in a way not like being forced to but sort of also there's films that I wouldn't necessarily gravitate towards than I do then we watch them and then it's like oh my god I wouldn't have seen this and just like maybe you wouldn't go talk to someone because you know you think they're different than you and then um, you end up being like a really good friend so I sort of think this podcast is it just means so much to me in that way of like making it reminds me to be open more open-minded and continue to grow and learn um from other people and, and, and everything like that. And then um, being Latina, I think, I don't know, I never really thought about it um, as much as I have in the, with this podcast, um, because like I said, I grew up in the Rio Grande Valley where everyone basically looked like me. And so in some ways I sort of always wanted to go where people didn't look like me because <laughs> it, it felt, you know, like it was kind of boring in that regard of like, oh, we're just all the same. We do the same things. Um, but now that I've been, um, outside of, you know, uh, I, I think I've been outside of uh, my small town um, for for almost like, I don't know, like 12, 13 years. Um, and now I think is when I've actually been able to appreciate, uh, you know, my culture and how I grew up and those traditions because I don't have them um, as, you know, like I'm not around that big group anymore. Um, and my family, you know, we're all in different places. So um, I sort of have, have learned to, um, 
you know, uh, just like kind of look back at that and be like, oh, I, I took it for granted a little bit. Um, and then also just in the general sense, I think um, I've also learned that being Latina is, is me, you know, what I like, what I do. Um, and I kind of don't fit those the stereotypes in the media of Latina. You know, I'm not very loud. I'm not, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm more like our family is not that close. Like, so it's just sort of like, but that's being Latina too, um, because that's me. Um, and so I think I, everything I do is, 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 um, is that. So I sort of have accepted that too, that instead of, you know, like Rosa was saying, um, it's not about whether, you know, Spanish or not, it's like who you are. Mm -hmm. And I'm just adding another little piece of Latina to the little pie of, you know, um, fellow Latinas. So I hope, um, I don't know, I hope it's okay. <laughs> I hope it's good. <laughs> so before we end, we have some rapid fire questions. The first question is, what is your favorite color? Purple. Green. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is something you have been proud to say you have accomplished? Ooh, I have one, maybe for the both of us. <sighs> Our little DVD. Yes! <laughs> Of in the, we got our we got pool quoted on our DVD oh, uh, in the Heights. Yeah, oh, that's my God. That's, uh, that's, that's Rosa's so cool. quote. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, that that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, if you could have three people dead or alive for dinner, guests, who would they be? You know what? Um, I'm gonna yes, I'm gonna say my mother. I'm gonna say Guillermo del Toro, and then I'm gonna say. Anthony Quinn, random, I know, but yes. <laughs> um, I would actually say my my grand my my grandpa because I remember he he died when I was around seven and but I just remember he's probably been the only like I mean I haven't had too many deaths in my family but um I remember crying so much with him and I feel like he would have imparted so much so much knowledge on with like to me um so it'd be so nice to have dinner with him and kind of pick his brain um and then i think a good compliment to him would probably be um edward james almost <laughs> um and then um to make it a party i think also raul julia so so what is a book that you have recently read or are currently reading that you would recommend i've been trying to read this book for a while so you guys have made me um need to go back to it but um <laughs> i got it at a book festival um a few years ago and it's called um less Las Nargas de J-Lo, J-Lo's Booty, The Best and Most Notorious Columnas and Other Writings by the First Chicana Columnist in Texas, 1995 to 2005, by Barbara, uh, Barbara Renald Gonzalez. Um, and so it's basically all her um, compilations of her work, um, mostly, I think, in San Antonio, for the San Antonio Express News. Um, and some of her, her, like what I have read is just really interesting because it's sort of not the thing that you would think she would be writing about as a Latina, um, mm -hmm. a bit of controversial stuff. Um, also critiquing um, the, you know, the, the people and, and within ourselves, which I think sometimes you need to do that and, and, and tell, you know, it's not all rainbows and butterflies within our group, but you need to, you know, be able to grow and, and hear the hard stuff. Um, so it's, it's really good. And then also just um, since I'm from the Valley, San Antonio is the bigger city above that. So it's also really interesting to hear, um, to read those stories from San Antonio um, and, and just learn about, you know, a, a fellow journalist, um, Chicano journalist. Um, and also a lesson I've learned from this is save all your writings. <laughs> Maybe you'll <laughs> compile it later as, in a book. <laughs> Um, so the book that I've actually read that I, I really enjoyed is The Undocumented Americans. Um, it's written by Carla, Carla Cornejo Villavicencio, who is one of the very first um, undocumented students to graduate from, um, is it Harvard? I think it's Harvard. And I mean, undocumented um, immigrants, my mother was an undocumented immigrant. So all those stories always hit home to me. And the book pretty much is her serving as a vehicle to tell all these uh, stories about so many uh, people, so many undocumented people, uh, people that aren't necessarily um, the, 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 the people that you normally see in TV and tell, uh, and, and film, like your, uh, your nannies or, or, or people you, who do your landscape. But in fact, these are the people that helped, um, clean up, 
back in 9-11 and who are now currently uh, suffering and battling a lot of health issues due to everything they were inhaling back then. And to learn about everything they've experienced in terms of um, not being paid or being um, or being paid with the check that easily ba that bounced and just stories like that that you'd never imagine um, undocumented people or, or putting that on, on certain people um, around this country is something that it stayed with me and the way she's an incredible writer by the way um, and, and the way she she tells these stories and she goes interviewing people um, around around the country it's just fascinating and very very impactful uh, pretty much so yeah, um, The Undocumented Americans. It's really, really, really a good book. So thank you so much, Rosa and Catherine. We learned a lot about you. Thank you for taking the time every day to sit down and talk with us. Can you let everyone at home know about any upcoming projects and where they can connect with you? Yeah, so you can find um, all our info and all our um uh, you know, podcast episodes and reviews on latinxlens.com. Um, and then we recently just launched a Patreon. So if you want to support us in that way, um, patreon.com slash latinxlens. Um, and what we have coming up is just more episodes. Um, and um, we're doing a few festivals. Um, and so you'll, you'll be able to sort of see all, all that and um, yeah, film, television and in-depth episodes on uh, Latino filmmakers, actors, um and hopefully a few other things that we can't talk about yet but um yeah just exciting stuff so um latinxlens.com is where you can find all that info awesome well thank you so much guys yes, thank we you. really love this thank you for just taking your time and doing this we really appreciate it thanks for having us thank you yes thank you this was fun thank you